Lee at New Middle School. Welcome back to Sunday Sermons. I am Leah. I feel like I need a theme song and so I made that up right now. But that's besides the point. Truly, welcome back Lake Avenue Middle School. It is so good to see you. We have so much to do. Um, I feel like there's so much to update you on, but at the same time, we're still quarantined. So I really don't know what to update you on. Um, my sea monkeys are still dead. I haven't put the new ones in. I'm honestly a little nervous. Let's see how that goes. Um, That's about it. Moving on. Okay, so there's so much to talk about today. We're finishing up our section of frequently asked questions that we're starting in Genesis. Last week we walked, we talked and walked through God creating the earth, which is amazing. Like God, it, he speaks to my pattern loving soul. Like he matched the days with animals and creation within that. Oof gives me chilly willies thinking about it. Our God is super cool, guys. You don't understand. Well, I think you do, but I want you to understand more. So we're basically gonna jump right into it. But first, I do have some announcements for you. So I'm just gonna, you know, rattle those off real quick. First of all, our eighth graders, listen up. This is important for you. So we've been talking about this carnival that's coming up. It is this Saturday, which is insane that it's already this Saturday. Saturday, June 13th, starting at 7 30. We will be explaining it. Perry has been talking about it a little bit. He is sending out a letter this week, but also it's been in a newsletter sent to your parents. If you're not a part of the newsletter, sign up at lakeavenue.com backslash high school because, oh my gosh, you guys are freshmen. Um, but we are going to be breaking you up alphabetically. So every 30 minutes, it's a different set of alphabets for our students who are going to be freshmen, but you have incoming sixth grade siblings. We have a special section for you as well, but don't worry. This isn't goodbye, goodbye. Josh and I will be at the carnival on Saturday to say how much we love you. This isn't the end. It's literally just the fact that you're going to go to the warehouse instead of the middle school room now. Like we still get to be best friends and I need you to still be my best friend because I love you. Anyways, so that's this Saturday starting at 7.30. For our sixth graders, that'll start at 6. But we're emailing your parents. And if you're watching this, you're a week ahead of time. I kind of love that. You guys are rock stars. Next thing. This is for everyone, including high school students, because you guys are running high school students. It's nuts. But the exciting thing is camp week is coming up. It'll be the th fourth week of July. It's like the week of the 19th. We have dates coming for you in that newsletter this week. We are going to have opportunities to somewhat get on campus in unique, in unique ways to keep you safe, but camp is still going to be special. I need you guys to be praying and being excited because Josh and I are coming up with trying to think of like ways to incorporate how much God loves you with how much we love you with how much summer is amazing. So be praying for us, but also be praying for the exciting, exciting idea that God is going to be speaking to you from your house with the hype of camp is going to be great. Then, but please never forget this. We had so much fun this last Friday. Family feud, it's basically family feud Friday Zoom nights. It's, we should just be calling it that. It's every Friday at 7 p.m. on Zoom. The link is on our website. And it's just so much fun. There are gift cards at stake, which is even better because it's like you have fun, but then you're like, wait, I won, so I get something? Like, yeah, we love you that much. But we love you also so much because after this airs on YouTube every Sunday, directly after, we hop on a Zoom call and we all get together and we get to talk about this sermon. It's during our Sunday sermon discussions. The link is at lakeavenue.com backslash middle school and we get to just sit and be together in community. And it's so nice. It's such an amazing time. We didn't do it last week because I completely don't know how to use technology, so I messed stuff up. But it was incredible how much I missed you, if that makes sense. Like, it is a short time, but it's a beautiful time for us to come together and really emphasize what God is calling us to do. So with that, we are going to dive into this week's sermon. Oh my gosh, guys. I 
am a big Old Testament nerd. I love the Old Testament. It's my favorite. I have read Genesis many, many times. And yet every single time that I read this section that we're going to talk about today, it only gets better. And the thing is, Josh and I planned this sermon series back in February, like a long time ago. We ended up throwing James in the middle of it. And so without even knowing it, God was pushing us to this moment. Today we're going to be talking about the creation of humans, and this is so prevalent to what we're, what's going on, not only in America, but in our world today, and I need you to listen up. So grab your Bibles, open it to Genesis 1, we're going to start in verse 26, and it says, Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness. And let them have domain over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, see, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of the, all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And God to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth and everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made and indeed it was very good. And as there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. Let's pray. Gracious and holy God, we welcome you to this space. God, wherever we are, whether we are in our room, in our bed, cozy and snuggly with our blankets, or God, whether we're in our living rooms, in a car, if we are in our yards, if we're walking around, God, I pray that you bring your overwhelming sense of presence to us. God, it has been a long five something months of new things one after the other, but God, your goodness, your presence, your love, your peace, your joy, and your kindness has thrived through all of that. God, I pray that you speak through me and that these words are a form of worship to you in Jesus name. Amen. Let's jump into it. Point number one. Our very existence reflects the image of God. So in verse 26, remember it says, when God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image, in his image God created them. Male and female, he created them. It's amazing that God took so much time deciding the pattern that we learned about last week. That he, he sat there and he said everything from space to the ocean to the animals I created to the, the uh, plants that I created to fully, like everything that I've created, God finally said, and now I want something to reflect me. I want something to rule over everything I created that is my reflection. So here we are. Like, it's a done deal. The end. Like, God called us to be examples. So then we say, we don't know about you guys, but when I hear this, it feels like a lot of pressure. I remember one of the first times in college when um, I was a biblical studies major. So for me, I felt like I needed to know the Bible a lot when I got into college. And I was like, all right, I'm going to read this by myself. So when I read it, I was like, oh, that's so beautiful. We're made in the image of God. And then I get to college and one of my professors says, yeah, you're made in the image of God to be a, like to control everything, to keep what God created the way God created it. And I was like, Oh, oh, that's a job. That's not just a warm, fuzzy feeling. That's a, that's a command that is commanding me to do something that for the last 18 years, I haven't been thinking about. We are not only reflecting God, but we're also responsible for everything that he created before us. He has called us 
to be more than just his image. We are being called to be the caregivers that he is. So we are called to be more than just bodily representations. Our actions, our words, our responses, our attitudes, our expressions, all of these need to be reflections of God. So then in point two, we see God has given us everything to succeed. It's like a foolproof plan. So in verse 28, it says, God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and everything and every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, see, I've given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food and to every beast of the earth, to every bird of the air and everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has breath of life. I have given every green plant for food and it was so. So literally God speaks to whoever who we find out later is Adam and Eve. He's talking to them and basically saying like, hey guys, happy birthday. Welcome to earth. Um, so I've created everything that you see, including you. Um, I've left you food. I've left you water. I've left you entertainment. I've left you a hobby, gardening. Um, I've left you another hobby, maybe swimming. You can choose what you want to do there, but yeah, it's have fun. I love you. Love God. You know, like God literally was like, I know everything you need because I created you. So why would you doubt that you would miss anything. So the animals in the sea, the animals on land and the plants with seeds, everything can be used as food. He has fresh water versus salt water, but he has both. And then we go and we can see that from last week, the fun tie in in all of this is that day one and day four of last week were connected. Day two and day five were connected and day three and day six were connected. And now we're seeing that God created all of this, knowing that something greater in his like line of production or someone needs to tend to it. So it can be self-sufficient. It can care for itself, but God's like, no, it could, it can totally be self-sufficient, but it could thrive with help. So God had a more complex plan than we initially even imagined. So God realized that the goal was not just to create the earth and everything that's in and around it, but the whole point is to have humans rule over the earth and therefore he needed a way for us to be able to survive and to sustain life with nourishment. So God knew <clears throat> what we needed and what was best for us before we existed or could worry about things like that. Like, I know there are moments where I sit there and I go, well, it's like a really lame version of worrying, but I go, I'm so hungry. What am I going to eat? Like, God, when he created Adam and Eve, he was like, I know exactly what you're going to eat. You're going to eat whatever's around you. So then we get to point number three, which is my favorite. And honestly, it kind of makes me like tear up and sometimes cry when I read, when I read it. So point number three is it was and can be very good. So in verse 31, we see it say, God saw everything that he had made. And indeed it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning the sixth day. So a lot has been going on in our country for the last few weeks, whether it's the pandemic, whether it's protests that we're seeing for Black Lives Matter, or whether it's astronauts being launched into space. We have seen God's original plan for humans, not only tending to God's creation, but we have seen that it's tainted by our sinful nature. We begin to be put up against one another instead of being brought together like God intended for us. What we see is that people are trying to find ways to assert power over another person, even though that was never something God wanted to happen or asked for us to do. 
God did not create male and female who were built, who were white, and then build a male and a female who were black, and then give all the power to the white couple and say, hey, you're going to rule over these black people. So if that didn't happen in our Genesis story, if that wasn't clear, because God up until now had made it incredibly clear that everything was to be ruled over and to be cared for by us, why would he not have created something, another human to rule over? If that's not in our Genesis story, why, are, why is that in our 2020 story? God commanded Adam and Eve to be fruitful and to multiply, meaning that all humans will come from their line. Therefore, all would be magnificent images of God. Have you ever noticed how boring Cheerios are? I know this is kind of a, like, I'm a little bit hungry, so it's a little bit of that and a little bit of, but Cheerios are really boring looking. Like, they look kind of like cardboard. Um, depending on what Cheerios you get, they can kind of taste like cardboard. And they make your milk look real weird afterwards. Like, I don't know, liquid cardboard. You know what I mean? Like, I always think of in Johnny Depp's version of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, he says that cereal is like the paper shavings from a paper or a pencil sharpener. So, yeah, so that's what we're working with. And so they're the most boring shade of tan in the entire world. But then we do have the option of Fruit Loops. So when you look at Fruit Loops, not only are they beautiful and taste amazing, they're the exact same shape as Cheerios. They're the same circle with a hole in the middle. They're a um, like an aired out kind of uh, bread. That's why they give them to babies because they won't choke on them. They just dissolve. Um, but the best part about these is like not only are they beautiful to look at when they're dry, when you put them in the milk, like they begin to swirl and kind of make the milk like a colorful Milky Way galaxy. Okay, anyway, that was a joke. Anyways, God created the intention for humans to be beautiful, to be diverse. And humans weren't meant to look like a bunch of Cheerios. Other God, otherwise, God would have said, like, you know what? I really want them to have my hair. So that's the most important thing about humans. So there we go, hair. But that wasn't God's intention. God said their entire being is going to reflect them. God said, I want my reflections to reflect all different parts of me. And so God decided on Fruit Loops as his aesthetic. He said, I need color. I need difference. I need diversity because I, God, creator of the earth, ruler of the universe, am a, a complex and diverse being. So I can't just make one image of myself. I'm going to create thousands of images of myself. God never wanted humans to rule over one another. God literally said, rule over this creation. He didn't point to each other and say, uh, man, you're in charge of the woman and uh, woman, you're in charge of everyone else. And you guys are also in charge of the people who look different than you. Like, no, it's, hey guys, there's two of you because you, you need help. It's, it's a big planet. Um, I need you to tend to the earth. That is why I created you. Also, I love you. Please love me back. Like, it was never meant to be a power dynamic. God never said that humans could look at someone's black skin and if they had white skin, that meant they were better and they deserved more. God never intended for people in positions of authority to take advantage of those they were called to protect and serve and instead they kill them without cause. God looked at these humans, these probably utterly confused, very discombobulated humans that were Adam and Eve. And it literally declares in verse 31, 
God saw everything that he had made and indeed it was very good. For the past five and a half days leading up to creating humans, it's always been, and God saw that it was good. And when we read that, we know that that's the closure of that creation portion. I mean, in day six, we technically get two closures. So we see that once he makes cattle and everything that crawls on the ground, he says it was good. But then he moves into humans. And once he looks at that, he goes, perfect. Very good. You can't get better than very good from God. And there was evening and there was morning the sixth day. God was like, mic drop. I'm done. That was perfect. Like, you two are rock stars. Be fruitful, multiply. Everyone else, you keep being rock stars. You're still great. But these guys are like rock stars. You know, like, we were set aside to be something bigger, better, and different. And I need you to listen to my final thoughts this week. God intended for us to all look like different parts of God. Therefore, one image of God is when one image of God is oppressed by another image of God, we are sinning against God. Our silence and our lackadaisical response to racism is sinning against God. Not acknowledging, not acknowledging or standing up against racism is a sin against God. All lives can't matter until we make our world acknowledge, accept, and produce evidence that our black brothers and sisters' lives matter. My challenge for you this week may seem difficult, but it's very simple. As followers of our Lord Jesus Christ, our savior of our sins who died on our cross, died for the sins of the people around him and the people to come, which is you and me. Jesus died and rose again three days later, only to wait 40 days after his resurrection to ascend into heaven to sit at the right hand of God and rule heaven. It's still our job as humans to tend to this earth. We cannot step, we cannot stop and acknowledging, we can't, I'm sorry, I'm getting discombobulated. Okay. The challenge this week is simple. As followers of our Lord Jesus Christ, we cannot stop and only acknowledge racism. We must fight against racism and boldly speak out against it. We are all seen as very good images of God. So let's not only make sure, but let's fight for a world to see that all races are very good. It has been a very difficult week for a lot of us. Our eyes are being opened to things that, for me as a white woman, have never had to acknowledge or never had put in front of my face of the realities that my black brother and sisters have had to live with for generations. A friend of mine reminded me this week that when it comes to voting and democracy, that if she had to ask me for one selfish thing, she'd say, vote because my grandmother couldn't vote. Her grandma is only 70. And women got the right to vote a hundred years ago. Our black brothers and sisters have been suffering for generations. So it is my job and our job as white people and the white community to step up and call out those who are not willing to acknowledge that our black brothers and sisters, our brothers and sisters of all colors, they are very good. And we can't declare truthfully 
that everyone believes all lives matter until we prove and exemplify that black lives matter. We are the image of God and God called us very good. So this week, be bold and prove that all of us are very good, that our black brothers and sisters are very good. Let's pray. Gracious and holy God, you are the God of justice. You are the God of the oppressed. God, help us. Help us see the places we need to speak out. And though we may feel young or feel like we cannot talk to people older than us, our family, our siblings, our parents, about these difficult conversations, God, you have called us to be bold. You have called us to tend to this earth. God, allow us opportunities this week to tend to one another. God, thank you for our black brothers and sisters. And God, may you give us the strength and the energy to continue this fight until our black brothers and sisters' lives truly matter and it's shown through action. God, thank you for our very good creations of these middle school students and remind them how strong and powerful they are. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Toodles.